Previously on the adventures of John Smythe. He fired! He dies! No! Gunfire! Again! This was the moment he knew he was dead. No! He had died! He had met the same end as his father! father. And now, the thrilling conclusion. The wind flapped at John's ears. The noises of those around him could not distract him from what he knew he had to do. Return to the exact place that his two ancestors had got before him. The cool breeze was more than enough for John. He was invigorated, knowing that this would be the day the chicken dinners would grace his family. For three generations now, the Smythe family had eluded any sort of chicken dinner. But this would be the day. This would be the day John finally ate. John was in an unfortunate position. As he descended, others were around him, only feet away. Knowing he didn't have much of a chance in a fistfight, he ran, ran for his life, to a nearby house, which might have some kind of weapon. Dum 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 dum. John's heart beat faster than a fast thing. John was armed, but only with a pistol. Would it be enough? Of course not. He knew this. Whoa! John's connection to reality had become fractured. Was this all real? Was he in? <laughs> or was this all some kind of sick game? John was in luck. He found all the weapons he needed. He could dispose of his puny pistol. It's time, John said, as he jumped off a building armed to the teeth with an assault rifle. Silence once more. But he knew this was only temporary. Many people had landed in the area around John, and he can't be alone. Or could he? What were the odds that everybody had already left out of the hundred people that he thinks joined? There are only 76 remaining. John was not like his other ancestors. He was a lot more laid back, and also a lot more dirty-minded. Whose leg does a guy to hump to get a decent AKM attachment around here? He joked. John had had a ridiculous streak of luck, finding an eight times scope and more ammo for his weapon. John was safe for now, and he knew that. But he could hear gunfire nearby, and it was putting him off. The countless deaths of those around him filled him with something similar to dread, but also a weird confidence. With courage and conviction, he fled from the scene, uh, but couldn't actually get past a small bit of wall. This was a great risk John was taking, but he could see a vehicle just up ahead next to the dreaded school. He knew other players would only be hot on his heels in mere seconds. This was a big risk that John had to take for his father at his father's father. This buggy would carry him to safety. As John neared the school of death, his heart entered his throat just as his father's had in stories told before him. He was at the buggy. He drove with his might, holding down shift, and uh, I mean the, the gas pedal, to gain as much speed as possible. Being an off-road vehicle, he could easily weave around the bullets that were trying to hit him. It was fine going through the trees. He was laughing, laughing at the fools he was leaving behind. The looping sound of the buggy gave John a splitting headache, like wood being carved by an ax. He knew that he had to stop sometime soon, but he wasn't in the area. He had to cross a bridge first. Someone was on his right. He spotted him. Dare he try and run him over? No, he thought to himself. That would be a foolish move. He could carry on, and he might be able to get to safety without risking a life. But there may be others on his way there, and they may claim his life, as they claimed his ancestors. Oh dear! It looks like things had gone... Oh, no! He was fine! Wow, what a stroke of luck! John Smythe thought to himself. I am John Smythe! He cried with newfound confidence after nearly escaping death. John had arrived at the bridge. A bridge that was notorious. He didn't know how it was notorious, considering he was new to this whole thing. But it, I'm sure it is notorious. An easy target for those lying prone at the other end. John ducked and weaved his way across the bridge, utilizing his amazing buggy skills and uh, keeping a keen eye on his gas. John headed to the only place he knew would be safe, a small area in the southwest of the entire map, or just the south even, the kind of west of the island. Again, this is very improvisy text. John had arrived at a conurbation that he could make into some kind of haven. He entered with trepidation. John had never seen a building like this before. It had a roof that was kind of a balcony, but also wasn't really a balcony. John knew that outside he was a sitting duck. It was time to go in. Uh, but for some reason, John could hear the sound of an approaching vehicle. Someone was outside. John sat poised. 
ready to strike, knowing at any moment the enemy could pop through. This is a really bad time for network lag, he thought to himself, not quite knowing what that meant. He was here. What the fuck was that?! John thought to himself in the afterlife. After unloading an entire clip into his enemy, it wasn't enough for a single shot from a UMP? I- I- I don't know what happened there, that's really fucked me up. WHERE AM I?! shouted John Smythe the fourth. His only memory was that only seconds ago, he was in a plane with... 95 other strangers. Aside from the memory of the plane, John didn't remember anything other than his own name and his one mission. John was here to avenge three of his ancestors, all of whom died in the quest for poultry feasting. John was a smarter man than John, John, or John. John had employed a different technique. Choosing to not visit the same location as his ancestors, he descended at a slightly higher location uh, at a slightly higher altitude, corrected the author. <laughs> he descended on the town known only as Yasnaya Pollyanna. John was not alone in this village. Two others had joined nearby. But would they survive? Chances were one of them would punch the other to death. John heard the sounds of nearby gunfire outside his building. He knew he wasn't safe for long. He had to find a weapon to defend himself. He was in luck. Feeling the warm... Uh, why would it be warm? Feeling the... Tepid... Tepid? Tepid would. <laughs> he had new confidence, knowing if he did encounter someone, they would die. Because, hopefully, he wasn't going to experience the same kind of bullshit that his ancestor had, apparently. Like, seriously. Apparently, according to legend, he unloaded almost an entire clip of an AKM into a guy, and this guy shot a single bullet from a UMP that somehow managed to kill him. Seriously, explain to me how that works, said John aloud, knowing that his uh, soliloquy and monologuing could attract a nearby enemy, but he wasn't concerned. He was stressed, angry that the, the 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 situation that his ancestors had been put in, the futility of it all. He was angry. Ah, the AKM, the same weapon that had betrayed his father. He was going to put his faith in this weapon, knowing full well it could betray him. John did not have far to venture. He felt it would probably be best to leave soon, considering he had quite far to go. The time was on his side, however. But he didn't feel safe. John took a risk. He was going to enter another building and loot it before he left. The building held many treats, already providing him with a helmet, an extended magazine for his gun, and a sight for his gun. Things were going pretty well for John. He didn't want to get complacent, though. Complacency is what killed the cat, after all. Or something like that, John muttered to himself. During the rare time of peace and quiet that John would have on this island, he reflected on the thoughts of his ancestors. He did not know them well, but he had heard of their tales and he had heard of their deaths. John had heard one tale of his great-grandfather, John, who had <laughs> who apparently would get so confused in moment- uh, would get so confused in moments of panic and life and death that he would often refer to himself as Ed for unexplained reasons. John had cleared out almost all of the building. He would return to the roof, which was the last chance he had to claim any extra loot. He had heard the gunfire. He was no fool. John knew somebody was waiting for him down there. He didn't know who. He didn't know why. Well, he sort of knew why. They were all trying to kill each other for no real reason. John knew he had to get down from this building, but did not want to take the stairs as a jeep was nearby. He leapt for a... Uh-oh. John was fine. John continuously felt his connection to this reality and existence drifting away from him. He wasn't quite sure why, considering he pays an awful lot for this internet. I mean, reality. And he was promised fiber optic connection to life. I'm not seeing hide nor hair of that here, all I'm seeing a disconnect from reality. John chuckled to himself as he drove what felt like a family vehicle. I suppose everyone's having a bad time here. John hadn't actually seen any people since he left the plane. But back then, he wasn't trying to kill them. Back then, he didn't know what he was doing. All he knew was he had to land. But then, he found guns, and knew that everyone was trying to kill each other. And now, possibly fewer than half of those who originally started, now remain. John was a fool. He had accidentally driven into a mine zone. This was something that none of his ancestors had tried, but they died in other ways. Like I said, John was reckless. 
and he knows what he's doing better than any of his ancestors did. Ah, he screamed as he swerved to avoid yet another red zone slash minefield. John had to make his way for the bridge, an area that seemed mostly centralized to where the map was going. Once he was there, he would make a home and possibly settle down with a wife, where they would make a player unknown's child, where they would have an amazing life together, being the only people on a totally desolate land, living off painkillers, first aid meds, Red Bull, and that's just about it. John decided to abandon his vehicle and hug the cliffs. He decided what he would do would be to make himself safe in an area that nobody could find him. This was something that none of his ancestors had tried to do, and it might be a winning formula. John was reasonably exposed, but actually quite safe where he was. He was scanning the perimeter of his area for any other signs of hiding. John had found himself a perfect alcove to take respite in. And on that note, the author must go for a piss. Hang on. Ah, uh, much better. All this water just makes a writer got a piss. John had not quite appreciated just how safe he was. John was fucking laughing. John was in the middle of the area for now, and it had ages before it reset. If this island wasn't filled with 40 other people all trying to kill each other, would it have been a paradise? John thought to himself. Possibly. It did have infrastructure like a school and a hospital, a prison, a farm. Perhaps once this was a bustling area with a huge sprawling civilization and wild farmlands and possibly even wildlife, animals that roamed the plains and foraged before the war came. Before the dark days. John didn't think he'd ever say this. But John was bored. John had spotted someone else doing the same thing he was doing. John could shoot him. John could take the shot. Nobody would know. But he would know. Oh God, John did not expect this. John was in a red zone. The bombs had started. John decided to get in the water, knowing this may be his only chance at survival. However, the bombs didn't seem to be hitting around John in the water or on the coast. He would be fine no matter what. John decided to brave the explosions and get out of the water. 25 remain, thought John to himself. John could see an approaching airdrop. It was going just over the top of him. Despite the fact that this was normally a good thing, it suddenly occurred to John. It could drop an airdrop right on him. And if that were the case, oh dear, his cover might now be compromised. Balls, thought John to himself. He would have to swim for it. He dived down into the cold water, knowing that under the water, he was at his best possible advantage. No one could shoot him, and also not many people could see him unless they were looking in the exact spot they needed to be. The problem was, John had quite far to go underwater. His lungs were screaming. I need air, thought John to himself, his body resisting the urge to resurface, knowing that at any moment, his skull could be encaved by a 50 caliber bullet. He rose, risking everything for this moment, just for a breath of air. John knew he could not make this, but he swam for his dear life nonetheless. The opportunity was there. All he needed to do was get onto land. If he could get onto fucking land, then we might be all right. The area was resetting. John was on the fast moving side, so had to act swiftly. What's going on? Why am I still swimming? Thought John to himself. The cliff line carried on for another few meters. John was in real trouble. He really had to go. He really had to fucking go. Oh, the area, the area, the area! John sprinted, putting his weapon away, knowing at this point he wouldn't need it, but he would be safe if he could just make it a few extra feet! He had made it. He had made it this far. He didn't know how, but he had. John was still in trouble. He couldn't find a way of scaling the cliff. Come on, only a minute to get inside! This was not gonna happen! John could feel this was going to be the end. Sooner than he had hoped, he felt the hopes and dreams of his ancestors slipping from him. Come on, move! John had to get up. John had to get up the cliffs. This was his only chance at this point. Fuck. Only ten people remained other than John. John was so close, he could actually taste the chicken. Twenty seconds remained. Cha! Come on, John, he thought to himself. You could do this. What's going on? John had only a few seconds. He could possibly scale this cliff. If the gods were good to him. John was nearly there. The area was encroaching though. He didn't have far to go. Only a few more feet. Only a few more feet. Come on, John. He thought to himself, you're almost there. John had made it. John had actually made it. Although he couldn't get over the last few feet. The area. The area was taking its toll on him. John had killed someone. John had taken blood. Oh my God. John was about to get inside the area. John was one of only a few people remaining. 
He quickly ran for the corpse of the man he just killed. Looting all he could. John spotted another enemy. He had to kill him. John knew where his enemy was. He ran to a nearby rock, hoping it would cover him. He wasn't aware where any of his other enemies were. Shit! One was nearby. One was very nearby. He was in not a good situation here. Pinned from both sides! He came... Fuck! This was the end of John Smythe IV. But maybe his ancestor will do better. Who knows? If you'd like to see that chapter, be sure to like the video, subscribe to Gamehog if you already haven't, and leave us a comment down there with your favourite part of the tale of John Smythe. Anyway, we'll see you in the next chapter. God, I'm so close.